Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we'll be talking all about the sights in the autumn sky, the stars, planets, and constellations you can see as you head outside and look up this fall. And we'll also cover a very special solar eclipse coming up in October at the end of the episode. So let's head outside in late September and look up in the evening sky. We'll begin looking just north of west for a bright star that's on its way out of the sky. Arcturus, part of Boötes the Herdsman, is shining bright in the west. You can confirm it's Arcturus by using the handle of the Big Dipper, that nice arc shape that it makes, and just continue that line and arc to Arcturus. You'll have to catch Arcturus while you can, though. By late October, it'll be getting harder and harder to catch in the evening twilight. From there, turn your gaze to the southwest, and here you'll be catching the last glimpses of an iconic summer zodiac constellation, Sagittarius the Archer. The most recognizable part of Sagittarius is the teapot shape, and you should be able to trace that out depending on how dark your sky is. And if you imagine steam coming out of the spout of the teapot, that's where you're gonna find a gorgeous section of the Milky Way. But you will need to be in a dark sky on a moonless night to see it well. This beautiful band of light, which is our galaxy seen from the inside, is just an awesome sight at this time of the year, stretching from the southwest to the northeast across the top of the sky. Turning our gaze now from the southwest to the southeast, we're gonna be spotting a nice bright planet, the ringed giant Saturn. Saturn is just past its closest to Earth for the year, so it's still well worth a look through a telescope. Even a small backyard scope is going to show the rings and a few moons as well. And just rising at this point in the east, but rising earlier each night, is Jupiter. The largest planet in our solar system will reach its closest position to Earth on November 2nd and 3rd. It's currently the brightest point of light in the evening sky and impossible to miss, so it's well worth a look this fall. Your best views through binoculars or a telescope will be when it's higher over the horizon, more towards the middle of the night. But even earlier than that, you can get a pretty good view. Steadily held binoculars will show the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. And with even a small backyard scope, you could begin to see some detail on the planet itself, the cloud bands, and maybe even the Great Red Spot if it's facing Earth when you're looking. Now these two planets will continue to be visible in the evening sky for the rest of the year, so keep an eye out for them each night. In between Saturn and Jupiter this year is a well-known fall constellation, Pegasus the Flying Horse. This constellation is most easily recognized by a bright square of stars, and you'll find this shape well up in the east in the fall evening sky. The brightest star in the square isn't technically part of Pegasus at all. It marks the head of another well-known fall constellation, Andromeda the Princess. It's a bit of a family affair here in the Northeast, with Andromeda's mother and father, Cassiopeia and Cepheus, and also her lover, Perseus the Hero, making an appearance. Later on in the evening, and also up earlier as we get later into the fall, are some bright winter offerings, the beautiful Pleiades Star Cluster, which is part of Taurus the Bull, whose bright red eye is marked by the reddish-orange star Aldebaran. Also rising is the star Capella, the brightest in the constellation of Orija, the charioteer. Now, the morning sky for this season has a very good appearance of the planet Venus. So if you happen to be up before sunrise early in the morning, give a look east, and easily the brightest thing in that direction will be Venus. Now, of special note, on the morning of November 9th, there's a spectacular pairing of Venus and the thin crescent moon. Now, they're going to rise just before 3 a.m. in Chicago, and the two are going to appear less than one moon widths apart in the sky. Now, speaking of the moon, it's going to be part of easily the biggest event this fall in the sky, the spectacular annular solar eclipse on October 14th. This will be the first of two solar eclipses visible from the continental United States in the next six months. There will be a total solar eclipse in April. This October, though, is an annular eclipse, which means the sun won't be completely eclipsed by the moon. Rather, from areas in a narrow path, a thin circle of the sun will remain visible around the moon at greatest eclipse, creating a bright ring around the moon. The word annular means ring-shaped, giving this type of eclipse its name. Annular eclipses can happen because the moon's distance from the sun isn't constant, and when the moon is slightly farther away, it doesn't appear large enough to cover the sun. When it is close enough, as will be the case in April, 
a total solar eclipse can occur, and the sun's disk will be completely covered, allowing the solar corona to be visible to the naked eye. To see October's eclipse, though, through the entire event will require special solar eye protection. And though the most interesting phenomenon will occur in the path of greatest eclipse, you can still see the partial phases of the eclipse for most of North and South America. So grab some safe solar glasses or a solar viewer and look up on October 14th. You can get more details and timing information on our website at adlerplanetarium.org. So get out there this fall and see all the beautiful sights that the fall sky has to offer. That's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.